My house is on the edge of a small town, having several acres of land surrounding it. It isn't extremely isolated, but the nearest house is a quarter mile away, so it's definitely not your regular neighborhood home. I chose to live there for that reason, though. Anyway, I had lived there alone for almost six years when this happened. It was a normal weekend, and I had no plans at all. I was spending most of my time watching TV or working outside in the garden. Sometime in the afternoon, I was walking through the house and passed by a window when I saw something odd. There was a person walking through the trees far off in the distance. It was technically my property and I knew they could see my house from there, but what was most odd was the direction they were walking. They were walking toward the back of my house, which led to nothing but a vast woodsy area. I watched by the window as they slowly walked past my backyard and kept going until I lost sight of them in the woods. I didn't care so much that they were on the edge of my property, but it was just a weird thing to see given the location of my house. I went on with my day, looking out the window a few more times to see if he ever came back but I never saw anything. Later in the night, I sat down to watch a movie in my living room. In the middle of the movie, I began hearing footsteps. They were soft and slow, walking through the leaves outside. I got up quietly and looked out a nearby window. I jumped back, seeing a man just a couple feet from me. After the initial shock, I poked my head up again. He looked like he didn't even notice me at all. He was still walking, slowly making his way across my yard. They looked like the same person I had seen earlier, but it was hard to say for sure. I watched them walk all the way to the other side of my property and go into the trees. It was one of the creepiest things I'd ever seen especially since he came so close to my house this time. I stayed up a little bit later than usual to make sure he didn't come back, and I was ready to call the police if he did. By 11, I hadn't seen any signs of him at all, so I felt safe enough to get some sleep. I went upstairs and passed out. I don't know exactly what time, but I woke up in the middle of the night to that familiar sound. Footsteps right outside my house. As I got dressed and ran downstairs, the sound stopped. I looked through every window and didn't see anyone. Then I went up to the front door and looked out the peephole. That same man was standing in my driveway looking up at my house. It was an eerie sight, like he was plotting something. I got my phone and contacted the police, but I knew it would be probably 15 to 20 minutes before they would even be here. When I looked out at the driveway again, the man was gone, and that's when I heard the same footsteps around the side of my house. I waited quietly, hoping he'd just go away, but then there was a sharp, Sudden sound from my backyard, followed by absolute silence. I was shaking, standing in the same spot, when the sound of another shot rang through the house. The silence afterward lasted for 15 minutes until the police arrived. When they did, I heard them yelling outside, telling the man to drop the gun and everything. This went on for a few minutes, but eventually the police were able to get the man to comply. There's no clear answer as to what he was doing, and after I told them about what I'd seen earlier, with him walking back and forth through the woods, it only complicated things more. As far as I know, the man was pleading it as a temporary act of insanity. Nobody knows for sure if that's true or not but I find it hard to believe.
I've been working at a warehouse for four years now. Compared to others, it's really small. From the outside, you probably would never even guess it was a warehouse. It's owned by a small tech company that only moves its own product, so there isn't a need for a big building. Me and my coworker, Seth, were the two main overnight workers, taking turns on the night shifts, but almost never working together. The night shift worker always had to fly solo. The main job for the overnight guy was to fill out paperwork, like inventory counts and shipment confirmations, so it wasn't really a multiple person job anyway. But one night, while I was filling out these papers in the back room, I heard a knock echo through the front of the building. When I walked to the front, there was a man standing outside the building's main entrance. He had his hands above his eyes, pressing his face against the glass door like he was trying to look inside. I walked closer to the door, and once he noticed me, he moved his face back and knocked again to get my attention. Open the door. He yelled, grabbing the handle and shaking the door violently. I told him he needed to leave and that the doors were not open to the public. He looked at me through the glass for a moment, then calmly walked away. I wasn't sure what to make of it, but thought it had to be some drunk guy or something. I continued with my work, but on the following night, the same thing happened. I heard the knocks and the man was back at the entrance doors. He yelled at me again to open the door. I told him that he needed to leave, and if he ever comes back, I would call the cops right away. I think that did it, because he immediately turned around and quickly walked away from the building. The next few weeks, he never showed up. I mentioned him to some of the day workers, but they'd never seen the guy before. Then one night, while I was working the forklift, I thought I heard something by the back of the building. It was a thud, I thought from the outside of the building, but I wanted to be sure. I turned off the lift and walked to the back, but everything looked fine. Nothing had fallen over or was out of place. I walked further down to the far wall, and that's when I noticed the back door. I started wondering if that guy had come back and was at this door instead. Maybe that's what the sound was. This one wasn't glass though, and there were no windows on it, so I had no way of knowing what was on the other side. I checked to make sure it was locked, and it was, but I still had a strange feeling about it. I was tempted to open it and look around, but I knew better than to do that. I went back to work, only to hear that same sound a few minutes later. I checked again, and everything was fine inside, but the more I looked at the back door, the more of this strange feeling I got. Then I got an idea. I hurried back to the main office and decided to ease my mind by checking the security camera on the back of the building. My manager always told me that I should really never do this, but I really felt like I had to. It took me a second to find the right camera footage, but once I did, I saw that same man standing against the back door. He was leaning with his ear pressed against it, probably listening to me and hoping I'd open it. I called the cops, but it was like this guy knew somehow, because as soon as I put the phone down, he walked away. Over the next two days, we went through the past two weeks of security footage, after the two times I saw that guy at the front entrance and told him to leave, he continued to come to the building every single night, leaning up against the back door and listening. It was really creepy seeing this guy was at the building every night without me knowing. We had the cops stay on patrol outside the building for a few weeks after this, but the man never showed up again. I don't know what he wanted but I still worry that he's going to come back.
This happened last month while I was still living at my previous condo. It was connected to three other units and I was renting the fourth. I worked from home and one day at noon while I was taking a break, someone rang my doorbell. I went up and answered, greeting a young lady. She was small and skinny, wearing ripped jeans and a tank top. I looked at her, waiting for her to say why she was here, but after a couple seconds, I just asked. She asked me if I was the only one living here. The way she said it was like she was confused by me being there. I said yes and she apologized, saying she must have the wrong address. I said not to worry about it and closed the door. I went back to work after that and didn't think much else of it. A few more hours into the day, once I was done working, I went out to the supermarket and got back home around 8. When I entered my condo, I felt like something was off. I didn't know what it was, but I went ahead and put my groceries away and started cooking dinner. A few minutes in, I hear something from one of my bedrooms down the hall. All the doors in the hallway were closed, and I had no idea what the sound was, but I tried to convince myself that it was just my upstairs neighbor. I finished making my food and sat at the small dining table to eat. That's when I heard a door open. It took me a second to realize it was from my condo and not a neighbor's. I stood up and froze hearing footsteps coming down the hallway from the bedrooms and approaching the kitchen. A second later, a man appeared from the hallway. He didn't say anything. He didn't even look at me. He just walked right past me and over to the front door, opening it and leaving. I was still standing by the table, terrified. I ran to the front door and locked it and locked myself in a bathroom. I know the man was gone, but I was still scared that he might come back. Luckily he didn't, but police weren't able to gather any information on him. I told them everything I knew, but I only saw him for a moment and he didn't even look at me, so I never got a clear view. We asked the neighbors too, and none of them said they heard or saw anything. What's really scary is that there's no signs of a break-in, so it looks like he had to have some sort of key to get in. I also told the police about the lady that came by and how it was a weird encounter. It may have been a setup for them to scope out the place before entering. I just don't understand why this happened to me. There were a few things missing, but amounting to less than $100 total. Maybe I got home before he had the chance to grab more, but he didn't even have a backpack or anything, and the fact that they must have had a key only had me paranoid even more. I was able to move out, but it's only been a month, so I'm still shaken up. I'll probably have this to think about for the rest of my life, never knowing exactly what happened that day.